Hello and welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley and I'm a baby lock educator. And uh, if you saw the video from yesterday, I finally got my Altair and I'm super, super excited. I've been playing around with her a little bit and um, working with IQ. There are a few differences between IQ on the Altair and on the Solaris. And for those of you who have watched videos before, I am always on my Solaris too. Um, but something went wrong with it. I guess the board on the side where you plug in your USBs um, had to be replaced. So instead of um, being without a machine, which I can't afford to do, I, uh, I was able to get an Altair in the meantime, which I will be running just as much as my Solaris, there'll be uh, workhorses along with the Solaris and um, my Triumph. So who says money can't buy happiness? Hmm? Machines are happiness, fabrics happiness, threads happiness. So if you know what I'm, if you guys are, are with me on that, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so what I wanted to show you was how to create an applique in IQ Designer on the Altair. And it's essentially, it's, it's identical to that of, making, of creating that applique on the Solaris. So I'm gonna flip you around and we'll go through um, what it is to do that. And then also what I'm gonna show you is how to combine decorative stitches so that you can have a, um, you can have your satin stitch and add a decorative stitch around on on right over that satin stitch and um, the ones I, I usually use are either the candle wicking or the chain stitch you can use the bean stitch those look beautiful too on the trays that I have um, created those have the bean stitch over the satin stitch and it gives it a beautiful finished look um, I don't have one sitting here which is very odd but either way Let's get this flipped around so you can see how to create it also. Okay. So you're going to have to bear with me on my hand in the way. We're going to go up to home and I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go back into IQ and I am going to pull up shapes and I'm going to show you how to do an oval. Okay, so I've got that circle there. I'm going to tap on the screen and then I am going to draw a box around that circle. And then I'm going to hit size and this may be too fast, so just rewatch this if, if I lose you. Um, it takes a little while to get used to. So I'm going to drop this down to a number that I can either remember or I'm going to write down. So on this, I'm actually going to write it down because when you size things, you want to make sure you do that perfectly or they won't line up. So this is 5 by 7.57. Okay, I'm going to hit OK and I am going to save that into the memory on the machine. And now I'm going to go all clear. I'm going to do another one of those. And the reason is what we're doing here is we're building from the bottom up. We're building an applique. So that stitch we just did gets saved into the embroidery side. That's a placement stitch for your fabric. Now we're going to place the tack down. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Just exactly what I did before. I'm going to tap the screen. I'm going to put a box around this. I'm going to go to size and I'm going to shrink it into an oval to the exact same measurements that I did the first one. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here. keep it at that. We've got the oval there again. So I am going to save into the machine once again. 
and then I'm going to hit all clear again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our satin stitch and then we'll do the decorative stitch that we want on the top of that. So we're going to go once again, we're building four layers here. So this is our third oval. So once you get the system down, it's super, super, super simple. And you can write this down so it's a, basically just a recipe for you. And do this with other shapes too. It doesn't have to be an oval. I'm just showing you that because I like ovals. Why? I don't know. Okay. So that is 7.67, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to head up to line properties, which is right here. Okay, so I'm going to hit line properties. I'm going to select, let's see, I'm going to select a candle wicking stitch. Actually, this is our satin stitch. So we're going to select the satin stitch and I'll make it purple. So I assigned a color. This is satin stitch. You've got your double stitch here or your bean stitch. You've got your triple stitch candle wicking, chain stitch, and a no sew. So we're going to select our satin stitch and I took purple as the color. So now how do we apply that? Well, we're going to go to the paint bucket in the line properties and we're going to tap on that. Now you can't see that, but that actually turned purple. Okay, so I'm going to hit next and by turning purple, what it's telling me is it accepted that line property. So I'm going to actually increase to the maximum what I can do here for the satin stitch. I increase the size of it because that'll allow my decorative stitch on top of that satin stitch to show even more. Okay, so it just loaded it in. So now we've got that. There's our satin stitch. I'm going to hit memory again. Now that's saved and I can recall that up in, um, in the embroidery side. So now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to hit all clear again. And we're going to do our fourth and final, our fourth and final oval here. Okay, I'm going to size it, squish. I prefer to call it squishing than sizing. It's more fun. Okay. There is our next oval. And what did we do before? We're going to go up to line properties. We're going to select a candle wicking. And I made the last one purple, so I'm going to do this one in lime. Sounds weird, but it'll look cute. Okay, I hit my paint bucket. When I hit that paint bucket, it allows me to apply that line property to that particular line. So that just made that green and I'm going to hit next because I want to apply the properties to it and solidify that. So I'm going to hit preview and that's where this is a little bit different than the Solaris. So now we've got that beautiful, beautiful candle wicking. Okay. And I'm going to dedicate that to the memory also. So now what we're going to do is we are not going to put set on that. I, we've, I've done that plenty of times in other videos about, um, on the Solaris when we're doing applique, but the, the Altair does not allow you to change stitch, stitch, to change the order in which you stitch out. So I'm going to head into embroidery. I went into my machine because this is where I save things. Okay. And I'm going to select my first stitch out, which is the placement stitch. Now I'm going to add that placement stitch again and you can see that you don't actually have to create two of them you can just apply it twice so we've got the stitch out or I'm sorry we've got the placement stitch we have the tack down stitch now we're going to add you got it our pretty pretty satin stitch so purple we're gonna hit set okay and you can see that these are uh, are not perfectly lined up because some of those didn't I don't know why but they didn't want to take the exact dimensions it was doing a 5.0 by 7.67 instead of 7.57 why that is I don't know but I'll figure it out 
Okay, so now you've got your beautiful candle wicking over the top of the um, over the top of your satin stitch. So let's bring this up so you can see it closer. And if I were, what I would do now is move that candle wicking stitch up a little bit. So you can actually isolate. that candle wicking and move it and I'm going to hit it that go to the right a little bit down a little bit and we've got beautiful candle wicking over the top of satin stitch now something else I would do is I would look at this and say okay is that the amount of of room I want to have over from how do I put this You've got your satin stitch. You want to be able to see that satin stitch underneath a little bit. So I would probably decrease because I increased the satin stitch as much as I could to its limitations. What I would do is decrease the size of that candle wicking stitch in order to um, have the best visibility. Now that's my choice. You can do whatever you want. You can have that candle wicking stitch take precedence over the rest of it. That's totally up to you, which is half of what's so fun about what we do. We get to make the calls here, which is unlike most things in life. Okay, so that is how you create a layered applique in IQ. And this is actually, the screen goes black when I, when I film with a computer, it's weird. Okay, so that's how you build a, uh, a layered applique in IQ. Very easy, very quick. And then what you can do is add your words to that, add your letters to that. So um, if I wanted to make, let's say I wanted to make a door hanger and have it say joy in there, have it say welcome, have it say happy birthday, whatever it is that I'm doing, you can add that. Now you're gonna wanna add that last so that, oh, I'm sorry, what you wanna do with that one is you want to add that after you tack down your fabric so that you can build from the center out. So I would do the tack down, I would do the placement stitch, then I would do the tack down stitch, then I'm going to cut around that, and then I'm going to have my applique fabric right there in the center. So now I'm going to applique letters if I'm doing that. I would applique, applique those letters across the fabric. Then I'm going to add my satin stitch, and then on top of that, the decorative stitch. And then you've got a beautiful, wonderful um, door hanger, and you can increase the size, you can do whatever you want. You can even add another um, another tack down because, for for instance, um, you can add a backing to that, a stiffener, and then you can when you place. So if you were to place a stiffener on the bottom of your hoop, you could add a piece of fabric on the back of that, and when you do your satin stitch, attach all of them. So you've got that, and then at the same time you can put your ribbon in, and you've got a door hanger, and you don't even have to buy the door hanger design. You can create it yourself. It's original, it's all yours, and it is so much fun to make. So hopefully that helps. Um, I do teach a class on that. I've got a door hanger class coming up. It hasn't been scheduled yet, but um, I'm waiting for the final digitizing to come back from my digitizer, and then um, I'm gonna schedule that in Facebook. So if you haven't joined my Facebook group, please, please, please do so. It's so blessed quilting and embroidery and just answer the questions and um, so I can know that you've got a machine and you're not a computer and you're not somebody that wants to come in there and sell my girls a whole bunch of stuff that they don't want. So if you are a sewist, if you want to call it that, then uh, just answer the questions and I will grant you access and you'll be there for all the classes. Um, I'm teaching the tray class, so if you hadn't, if you didn't know that, I'm teaching the tray class. Uh, which is oh so blessed trays um, this coming it's the 18th of September so it's on a Saturday uh, 10 o'clock PST and all that information is in the so blessed quilting and embroidery Facebook page group and all you do all we do as instructors is create a new group so there's a couple things you need to do with that but all those directions are listed in so blessed and pictures of the trays themselves and then following that will be a coaster class and um, We'll get to make the fun coasters. I've got some real fun ones being designed right now or digitized right now. 
with uh, Halloween things with like a witch hat and a pumpkin. And um, thanks to Cindy, she thought of a cauldron and that is being done. And then also with the trays, we've got a pentagonal tray coming, being digitized, which means you'll build the walls separately from the base and it'll be a deeper box, not just that box that we do, not just the tray. You'll have deeper sides on it so you can put more stuff in it, which is what we're always looking for, right? Because we have a lot of stuff when it comes to our supplies. Okay, I will keep you in it longer. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please subscribe if you haven't already. That way I know that this is reaching people out there and that I should keep making them. All right, have a wonderful day. I will catch everybody soon. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.